So we've probably all seen sci-fi stuff like this, the really elaborate um, interfaces. And I thought, okay, how do we build this sort of thing in Excel? And can you make your graphs look a bit more interesting? Uh, so a lot of this sort of thing is, it's mostly just adding extra shapes on top, maybe some fancy bars and glows. And if you've got a good artistic eye or you look up kind of example images, you can probably start to replicate it um, by just drawing on top. But how do you make them more dynamic? So let's focus on this big dial that I've got, the one that says 55%, and let's change it to 70%, and you can see that that actually grows a bit bigger. It's got this segmented effect on as if there are individual LEDs coming on or something to represent uh, the value as it increases. And what you can see is that maybe you can also change the number of segments as well. So we can see that it looks less fine, a bit more coarse, um, as we reduce it down to maybe, I don't know, 20. Um, but the other thing you can kind of see with this is that this will always snap to uh, that number of segments as well. So you could probably set this uh, number for whatever aesthetic you want, and then your user or your data will change this number and if I do this as 71% you can see the number in the middle changes and then 72% uh, it doesn't actually add a new segment on 73% 74 I need to have 75 I need to do 76 before I'll add an extra one on top so this is snapping to these segments so you can kind of draw this sort of thing manually and then put a donut graph behind it but it will always partially fill the segment so what i'm going to cover here is how how we can build that effect what do what data manipulation do we need to do to make this effect uh work so i'm going to open up a new sheet and just zoom in a little bit so it's a bit bigger to see and what we're going to do is just start with well, what information do we need so i'm going to start with n Let's set this as uh, cell styles input. And then I want a percentage. So I'm going to type that in as PC and set this as uh, an input as well. And N, let's say I'm just going to keep it as 10 for now, just so it looks a little bit easier when we've got the data on screen and then we can increase it later. And uh, maybe the percentage, I'm just going to make it 0.5. And if we set that to percentage, well, we can then just type the percentage in. We can type in 55 five instead of worrying about 0.55 or something like that so 50 right so what next 50 percent is the thing we want to display so what isn't being displayed i'm just going to label that pc2 for now uh, that is going to be one minus that percentage and if you set this as a percentage excel kind of automatically formats that one for you now we want to think about well how many segments are going to be filled um, uh, from this. So I'm just going to label this one segments and then that is going to be 50% times B1 there which is 10. So five are going to be filled. And then seg2, well that's going to be the remaining percentage multiplied by that. Now here's the thing, if this is then 50.25% or something like this, uh, these are no longer round numbers, so if we put a donut graph in like this, it wouldn't be locked to the, you know, the segments that we're going to draw. So I'm going to wrap these in some new functions. Uh, the first one I'm going to do pick is ceiling. So these are always round directly up, so like 2.001 will round up to 3. Uh, and this one I'm going to wrap it around, uh, wrap it in floor so floor.math of that and that's kind of the opposite effect that will always round down so 2.99999 will still round down to two so it doesn't matter which order you do those in depending on which um what effect you want if you've got really low numbers usually if it's like a hundred or something probably not really noticeable but if it's like six or seven you might want to think about this and it just means that those two numbers if you do one rounded up and one rounded down, we'll always add up to the right number. So what we've got here are basically uh, a number of segments, and we could make a donut graph about this that locks to a certain percentage, no matter what this number is, it will always round off. All right. 
but how are we going to draw some segments? How are we going to get this effect where all of these are like lights that have come on and then this is uh, this one's blank? I'm going to start with a sequence function. So apologies if you're not working on the latest version and don't have this. There are a couple of manual workarounds. And the number of rows I want are the number of highlighted segments. That's this one plus one. So I've got one to seven. And if I set this to 10 for a moment, you can kind of see we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, but here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a seventh one is um, empty. So that's what we've got here. We're going to have six that are all uh, one unit big, and then a seventh one, which is the remaining. So for this, I'm going to do kind of an if function. So if that number there, oops, let's open that bracket, if that number there is less or equal to the number of the highlighted segments, or less or equal to six, I want this to equal one. If it's greater than that, uh, then I want it to equal four, this here. So what I'm going to end up doing is this will produce one, 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 four. Except it's not because I need to change this D1 here to D1 hash and it will take advantage of the dynamic array there and fill it in automatically. So if I highlight this, it will always sum to 10. Um, if I change that to say 20, it will sum to 20 segments. The first 11 of them will be one. Now this is where we can now insert um, let's go to where the power charts are, insert a donut chart, and you can kind of see what's going to happen here. I'm going to delete the title and these legends just to make it a bit obvious what's going to happen. So if I change the number of segments, you can see they get a little bit broader, but this unhighlighted one um, stays the same. Now if I increase the number of segments though, it doesn't work, right? We're still stuck with the same number, and that's because if you click on it, it only highlights this many. So ideally, we would want to stick in just another hash again to, to make it like E1 hash to make uh, the array dynamic. Um, but unfortunately, it's not quite that straightforward. We need to do something else. So I'm just going to click on E1 and then go to formulas and define name. So I'm going to define this as uh, maybe something called segments. And here is what I'm going to change it from E1 to E1 hash. This works. So sheet one, the dollar signs are there to make sure that it's not going to float around. I'm going to OK that. Fantastic. Now, if I type in the word segments equals segments, it's going to drag this. It's going to replicate that entire set of columns again. Great. Now, let's click on my graph, and where it says sheet one, E1 here, or dollar E dollar one, uh, we want to delete the remit, we want to delete all of that and just type in segments. It would be lovely to stick the hash there just directly, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't work. So I'm going to return that, and now the graph is properly referencing this dynamic range here. So if I reduce the number of segments, you can see, well, there are fewer segments. The amount filled is still roughly about the same. Um, oop, that's because it's 50.25, isn't it? Yeah, so if it's exactly on 50, um, it's exactly 50% there. So if I can increase the number of segments, you can see it gets a little bit more detailed. I can just keep going up. This, this range here gets longer and longer, but it appears on here. So the rest is just kind of adapting this to look right. So uh, one thing I'm going to do first is I'm going to select my data and have a look at these series. So I'm going to rename this series as segments. And I'm going to add a new one called glow. And those series values are just going to be these. Because those are counting a number of segments, but they're also a proportion. 
So these need to be filled with a glow and it's going to come from this series. So we're just going to set that up now. If I click on the outermost one, click again, so I'm just highlighting the orange. I'm going to format that and just make that, I don't know, make that a darkish color. And then click the outside one, make sure that's clicked, make that white. I'm then going to highlight the whole graph and just set that background color to that dark color as well. And so you can kind of see what's happening now. This is going to glow. And the inside rings, well, I'm going to set that to fill, no fill, and the outline uh, is now the same background color, so it matches. Trouble is, that's now displayed inside each other. So what we're going to do is go to Chart Design, change the chart type, and come down to Combo, and make sure these are all set to Donuts. And what you can do is you can click the secondary axis. So if we uh, have them both on the same axis, they're displayed sequentially. If we click one of them to be on the secondary axis, they now start to overlap. So you can immediately see we've got our multi-segment thing. And if I want to increase that, Oh, I'm starting to fill it in. And if I want to increase the number of segments, I can just change that and it starts working. All right, so if you then want to change it, if you want to change the uh, one underneath, you unfortunately have to go back to change chart type, take that off the secondary axis, put the other one on, and then I'll bring it to the top and you can just start playing with this one. So for instance, I'm going to format this to remove all the lines, no outline there, so that's going to disappear. And I'm just going to click on this one and I don't know, come back to where's the shape style? You know, um, glow. I'll put a just a random glue to it. Now, when I go back to chart design, change that type again. Take it off the secondary axis. Put the other one onto the secondary axis. You can see that it's now filling up. So you can build this and do all sorts of different ways if you want. It's just a case of changing the aesthetic uh, as you want. Uh, probably something like make the lines probably thinner than you expect. These weights are currently about one or something, but we should probably go about half. Make the glows really subtle, like drop the transparency or increase the transparency to like 80 or 90 percent usually things like that uh, and just have a play around have a look at sample images google images is full of them just have a look and see what you can do to replicate it because not all of it needs to be perfectly functional uh there's certainly more hacks you could add on to make it that functional um but there you go once you've started at this point you can start to adapt it uh, and make it a lot more dynamic and, you know, add in the fancy stuff if you want.